And welcome on in to the latest edition of the Blue Horseshoe Podcast. He is George Bremer. I am Ryan Hickey. We are coming to you on Tuesday afternoon, George. And right now, the cloud of, I guess, uncertainty, if you will, around Anthony Richardson is not looking very good. The last time we talked to him, look, it didn't take a rocket scientist or a doctor to tell you Anthony Richardson looked like he hurt his, his right shoulder pretty bad. Nothing official yet from the Colts as we sit here on Tuesday, George, but by all reports, looks to be an AC joint sprain. Timetable right now is roughly about a month so far. Just look, we kind of talked to this on on the post game pod on uh, on Sunday night, only exclusively on YouTube, Blue Horseshoe Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe and check it out. The biggest thing for the Colts, like the timeline to me is irrelevant. The biggest thing that matters for them is that the next time Anthony Richardson touches the field, now it could be next week highly unlikely it could be a month from now it could be six weeks from now whatever or should say whenever that date is the biggest thing they have to focus on and worry about is making sure the next time richardson touches the field he is back to 100 percent health cannot rush it back under any circumstance i think that's that's absolutely the case and we talked about that on sunday night uh and i think it, i'm even more strongly in, in that opinion than, than i was then um Obviously, the number one thing about this season has been the development of this quarterback. Well, along with that is 1A, which is which is his health. And you've had, you know, so much already that he's gone through. The, the bruised knee, the concussion. Now this situation with the AC joint, uh, there's just no reason to put him back. And also, you know, with, with my quick research, my, my, my web now knowledge of this injury, it, it sounds like there's a really high risk of, of re-injury. So – you really don't want him to come back before he's ready, get hurt again, and then be out. You know, it's already been enough start and stop. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where that's even more likely. And also, as we mentioned on Sunday, the defense is playing relatively well. The running game right now looks incredible. And you get Jonathan Taylor up and running and get him to full speed, it could be even better. And Gardner Minshew has done his job. He's not going to the Pro Bowl. He's not going to be named, you know, the MVP. But he's going out there. He's making plays when he has to. He's not turning the ball over. He's doing the definition of what you want a backup quarterback to do. Why rush Anthony Richardson? I think everything from common sense to just on-field play is telling you to give this guy time and be patient. If you're a watch on YouTube, George, I think it's time to make a change. Where it says George right now in the bottom left where your name is, I think we got to put a doctor. DR period right there. Dr. Bremer with some of that. Tremendous now WebMD knowledge. There we go. Welcome. Congratulations. I should say. Forget. Welcome. Congrats. I didn't say in a Holiday Inn Express last night, but if I do, then I, <laughs> then I, I can get my doctor in. And so we have Dr. I like that. Dr. Bremer on the show. You're right. Because also, too, George, I mean, we'll get into a time or we'll get into like the, the next, you know, upcoming uh, amount of games here with what we expect Gardner Minshew to be. But you look at when the bye is week 11, right? Right after the Patriots game in uh, in Germany. If you look in, in the Colts list, let's say they're trying to bring Richardson back after the bye starting week 12 against the Buccaneers to the rest of the season, that's seven games at the end of the year. That's still so much time to forget about the record and forget about the playoff push just for his development. That is still a significant amount of time where, again, I think if you are cautious and say, you know what, the next five games, you're going to sit down. We got the bye. So that's six weeks. And we're going to bring you back for week number 12 against the Buccaneers when we think and when we know, I should say, think, no, you're fully healthy. That's still a tremendous t chunk of the season. You could still get a lot of work in with Richardson, still continue to develop him. Like you said, the last thing you want to do is ruin that where he comes back three weeks from now, re injures himself and is out for the year. And then all of a sudden, we're talking about a guy that potentially, if things come back and he stays healthy, which again, right now is not a guarantee whatsoever. But if he comes back and is able to stay healthy, if he has eight games, which he starts and finishes, again, not what you want, but it's better than right now rushing him back, getting hurt again, and we're talking about three games, maybe that he starts and finishes completely. It is that, That's a huge chunk of time that I think if you're the Colts, you circle that week 12 date and say, that's the target date. We want to bring him back. Yeah, and I think that's the key here. You can't go back and change anything about the pass. Obviously, you don't want him leaving three of his first four starts and missing one of his first five potential games altogether. But that's already done. There's there's right. no way to change that. That That is what it is. Situation they're in now, I think this is the best course of action. Let him you know, sit out the, these next five weeks, 
let him get that bye week under his belt, get him back to 100%, and then bring him back and, and ready to play. And, you know, one thing that I've seen a lot of that, that I just don't know that I agree with, there's a lot of talk out there, but he's playing recklessly, and he needs to change his playing style. I don't think he's played that recklessly. What's concerning to me, I would honestly feel better if I agreed with that argument because it'd be like, well, just, just bring him in, get him to be a little less reckless. What's concerning to me is these have all been pretty much just football plays. It's not like there's been incredibly violent hits. It's not like he's put himself in a situation that's irresponsible. They've just been normal football plays that have ended poorly for him. I mean, one time he just happens to, to bang his knee the wrong way on the turf. Another time his head snaps back in, in a way it usually doesn't, honestly, at the end of a, of a run in the end zone, and, and he bounces off the turf, and then that's how he got the concussion. And then on Sunday he just fell wrong. And then and the defenders wait with it. What it reminds me of, and this is not going to make anybody feel any better, but it's what comes to mind is, is Paris Campbell. It's very similar to what kept happening with him. These injuries that Paris wasn't doing anything. He wasn't, you know, not training well enough. He wasn't taking plays off. He just kept getting into situations that were not good for him, uh, the, but were normal football situations. And, with Paris, it just eventually stopped happening. I mean, that's all. And unfortunately, I think that's all you can kind of go with here is that it's, for lack of a better word, bad luck. And until that turns around, the Colts have just got to deal with it. And I think the best way you deal with it right now is let him get his rest, let him get back to full strength. And then, like you said, you just hope that you can figure this out, that you can get a little bit of luck on your side that you can change whatever is in your control to change. And I'm sure looking at all that, and if you can have a good solid seven weeks, uh, that'll probably be a little bit of a playoff push too to, to finish the season. Yeah, reckless is absolutely not a word I would use to describe right now his playing style or the reasons that he's hurt. Unlucky, frustrating, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of adjectives I would use to describe the feelings toward Anthony Richardson's health right now. Uh, I would definitely not use the word reckless because, like you said, it's for the most part normal football plays that are happening that I really – maybe outside, George, of telling him not to pull up when he's in the end zone against the Texans in week number two and running through the line just to make sure that he won't get hit. Literally, other than that, which, again, is just sprinting harder, I don't know anything you could tell Richardson when he comes off now, he's not an IR. I presu- I assume he's going to be on IR at this point. Again, when you're hearing any diagnosis or every diagnosis be four to six weeks, that should result in an IR stint. We'll see if the Colts actually make that move. But let's just say bare minimum, Jory's out for the next month. I don't think in the next month to six weeks when he, we believe, returns, there's not something you can actually tangibly tell him to do differently that's going to lead to him not being injured as more unless you change the way he plays the game. Which, unless if you tell Shane Steichen, no more quarterback runs. That's it. Like Outside of that and drastically changing the offense, there's nothing you can actually do or say if you're a coach or like us doing a podcast to tell Richardson to do differently to prevent him from getting hurt as much as he has so far. Yeah, and there were only two quarterback runs on Sunday. He got hurt on the second one. I mean, that's the thing. Um you know, you have to limit it, eliminate it altogether. And even then, I, I don't know that you're not going to have something happen in the pocket that, that, you know, develops. So I do think, and I think this is going to be his trajectory anyway. I mean, the injuries probably make it more uh, important, but I do think, you know, eventually you're going to see him be more like he was in college where he's, instead of running, he's, he's running to extend plays and he's looking downfield trying to, to make a big pass play out of it. I think that was always going to be the, the situation anyway. So I don't know that much changes, but I'm sure, I'm sure the Colts are going to go through every snap, everything they've done with him from the first day of practice, and anything they can change, anything they can tweak, I'm sure they're going to tweak it. But like you said, I don't think there's any massive, you know, overhaul that that, that you can really make here that's going to make that big of a difference other than, like you said, it's not massive, but, you know, running through the end of the play, so certain things like that, maybe, you know, trying to, when you feel contact, turn away from your throwing so- shoulder. I mean, I, little things like that, but I don't think there's really much that, that you can do here to make some massive, you know, bottom-up change. It's very frustrating. And I think, too, again, to, I guess, caution listeners 
um, that want to make that change and want to basically say, hey, you know what? Take the runs away. Like just only have him be a primarily pocket passer. I'm, I have to find it. I apologize. I don't know the username on social media that, that posted this. I'll try to find and give them credit. I'm not ripping this off myself. They posted it on social media and it was a great point. The run that Anthony Richardson George got hurt on on Sunday, the second desired run of the game, they took a play from the Rams game the week before. It was basically the same play. Same exact RPO sort of read. That run against the Rams was like a 20-yard, 25-yard run um, down the right sideline. Richardson got tackled and got up no problem. And then the very next week, unfortunately, like I said, he gets tackled the wrong way. Defender lands with all his weight on his shoulder, drives into the ground, and that's what leads to a shoulder injury. It is one of those things where when we're lauding Anthony Richardson for his explosiveness against the Rams in week number four, a lot of that is, again, set up with his legs, and you take those legs away. Again, that takes away a lot of explosive plays he does make, and it's not as just simple as, oh, tell him not to run. Running still, again, allows – um you know, allows him to, again, make these big splash plays. And in, in the case of the Rams game, allow the Colts to come back to almost win that game despite the fact they're trailing 23 nothing. So it sounds easier on the surface of just saying, oh, yeah, cut out the runs. Like, don't don't run that much. But again, we are seeing a lot of the reason for belief, right? A lot of reason for joy we've seen so far through the first five weeks of Anthony Richardson. Sure, he's made some beautiful passes, right? Oh, this is not just like this guy's, you know, only basically running back at quarterback. But that dual threat opens up just the passing lanes itself to him to make some splash plays. And again, you make him one dimensional. I think it makes it harder for this offense in general and harder for Richardson to succeed going forward. Right. And I think that's the thing. I mean, part of the reason you drafted him is his game breaking ability with his legs. Uh, it's just unfortunate that, that things have gone this way. Um, we've seen it before. I mean, Justin Fields got really banged up his rookie year and it's been a little bit better every year since for him. Uh, Jalen Hurts last year got the same exact injury. I mean, it's not, I say same exact injury, but there's so much variation here and, and how much the severity can, you know, waver, uh, that he got an AC joint injury right. last year. Uh, and obviously Derek Carr. the MVP and, and, and was able to, you know, go to the Super Bowl, lead team Super Bowl. Derek Carr just a couple weeks ago, got the same injury, uh, same general in, injury, uh, and was able to come back the next week. So it's not. No one's going to sit here and make an argument that in the first year of your rookie quarterback's development, him leaving three of his first four starts early because of injury and missing one altogether uh, in the first five starts because of injury is is good. No one's going to sit there and say, hey, awesome. That That's that's how you draw it up. But it's also not throw him out, go draft a new guy, which I've actually heard. Uh, Are you not serious? I've, I've actually – been told that already uh, from various people on Twix. So, you know, it's it, – there's – I understand. I completely understand that if you bring up throwing shoulder and quarterback in the same sentence in this town right now, uh, it is going to cause a lot of panic. And then we all know why. I'm not going to bring up the name here but because we, we live with Baltimore. that one. For yes. You know exactly why there's PTSD here. Uh, but not all, none of these situations are the same. I think that's whether it's injuries or it's player comps or it's, you know, one game from one season to the next. I think we have all of us media fans have too much of a tendency to, you know, draw comparisons from the past. And really most of the time, every situation is completely unique. And, and that's definitely the case here. Anthony Richardson is his own guy. It's his, it's his own career. Um, it's highly concerning. I'm not trying to downplay that at all. They have got to find a way to keep him healthy. Uh, and I still think that that begins with putting grass in in that field, no matter what it costs, because, uh, you know, the cost of, of, of putting in that grass, even if you got to pull it up every week and put down a new field, uh, is still going to be less expensive and, and less damaging the franchise than the cost of losing another franchise quarterback. But it's, it's its own situation. And I just, I, Nothing that happened in the past here, as far as quarterback injuries, has any bearing on on what's going to happen in the future with Anthony Richardson. Hundred percent on the grass. I first of all, grass just looks better visually, and I like the fact like players get the uniform sturdy. Let's go. That's what football is all about, George. Let's get a little mud in here. Let's let's play in the elements. Damn it. Number two, you're right. I mean, that could again. You heard Anthony Richardson say, "Bang his knee on the turf." If he bangs his knee on the grass, is the injury as severe? Well, potentially no. 
And like I said, whatever the cost of the grass is, is still cheaper and emotionally better for every single fan and Jim Mercer alike compared to keeping the turf, saving the money, we'll say, quote unquote. And like you said, potentially losing another franchise quarterback to injury again and having to reopen those wounds. You're 100% right. The fact that everyone, each person is different. Richardson, like Derek Carr returned from this injury and, and missed no games. Richardson, Richardson could miss a month. Jalen Hurts, you mentioned, missed, I think it was two games later in the year. Like everyone is different. So there's no real reason to compare. Um, and it's just one of those, right. It's frustrating. And again, you can feel frustrated. You can let it out. That's every, I, I'm frustrated. Every, every fan has a right. And you should feel frustrated in part because when you see Richardson on the field, he's looked good. And he's given you promise and you want to see more. It's not like, oh, this guy's a bum. Thank God he's off the, off the field. Like let's just move him. So it's in a way good. You feel frustrated because that means you want to see more right now. And what you saw early on is promising, um, but like you said, it's just whatever it takes to get him healthy. That's why the timetable kind of go back to what we started with has to be hundred percent healthy. It's not, Oh, he'll just go on IR and then come back no matter what, or, Oh, he's 85%. Let's just throw him out there. You mentioned the high re injury rates. He's a rookie quarterback. The last thing again, you want to do is totally wipe out this year by rushing back sooner than, uh, sooner than expected. Also really fast for any new listeners we have. Number one, welcome. Appreciate you joining us. Well, it's listening or uh, watching on YouTube. George mentioned Twix. It is, I love it, the best name of Twitter and X. Why say both when you say one together, Twix? I should not be surprised, George, because that's where most all the idiots live, and I've had plenty of bad takes, so I'm included in that. But the fact that people on Twix are coming out and saying, time to draft a new quarterback. Look, what are we doing, George? What are we doing? This is not, this is not, this does not signify his career. Again, there's a chance he could come back and never get hurt again. Like it, it is one of those situations. Let me ask you, let me ask you this then. Because we've talked about how he's gotten injured. You mentioned before it's absolutely not due to recklessness. He's through five weeks, right? Has missed and or not finished four to the five. It's concerning. But with that yeah. said, George, with him being as injury prone as he has so far early in his career, would you say right now? it is more of a coincidence that these injuries are happening, just bad luck, if you will? Or would you say you're more in the concern camp of he can't stay healthy now, the toll in his body is only going to increase, and this could be a trend for the rest of his career? Maybe not on the same, obviously, level, but this could be a trend where we're talking about Richardson and injuries for a long time here. I mean, right now, where, where we stand, I I think it's more coincidental because of what we were just talking about. It's It's been... Not really reckless behavior on his part, not really dirty behavior on, on the part of defenders. Um, it's just been football, and it's just not gone his way. Um, but while I say that, it does concern me long term because we don't have any other track record. you got five weeks right now with him, and four of them have not ended in a really positive manner. So, And because it's happened in, in regular play, it does concern you for all the things that we've just talked about. Uh, that it's going to be harder to, to really, you know, fix. But I'm not same token. And that's why I think this is such a complex issue. He's 21 years old, not physically developed all the way that he's going to be yet. He's not even had a full off season with the strength and conditioning coaches here in Indianapolis. Going to change his body. He's going to change his awareness. I mean, that's another thing. I don't know. Did he know Harold Landry was as close as he was on Sunday? Did, you know, is that, a year from now, two years from now, is that a play that he either changes where he's going, hits another gear, or prepares better for the the hit? I mean, there's experience brings a lot into this too. I think what part of what I'm saying you've got a 21 year old kid who now has a grand total of 17 starts under his belt since he was a high school senior, who is still learning, and he's learning how fast these defensive linemen are because even in the SEC. He might not get caught on that play. And that's the best, you know, college football conference in the world. Uh, but now you're at another level. And Harold Landry makes that play. Well, he knows that now. He learned it a very hard lesson. Those kind of things, I think. So, yes, I'm concerned, but I do think there are factors here that are going to come into play. And Shane's, I've got a lot of faith in Shane Steichen. Maybe it's misplaced. Maybe a few years from now, I will feel like that was the wrong thing for me to say. But right now, 
I feel like this is a guy who's been maximizing his talent, putting guys in the best positions to succeed. And I think he's going to figure out ways to protect him better as well. So, yeah, I do think it's a coincidence. I am extremely concerned. But I also think there's a lot of factors out there that are going to change over the next few months and years that hopefully will, you know, help him to, to stay healthy longer. I'm going coincidence as well because, again, it's kind of what we talked about to start the show. There's nothing right now for the most part you could say for him to change, like be able to change. And the one thing I think you're hitting on too, by the way, is actually a really good point. Something I didn't think about that I think maybe you're right. That will help protect him going forward. What do we always hear from any player going from college to NFL? One of the biggest and hardest jumps um, and adjustments they have to make is speed of the game, right? Not just speed of, of how you know fast things are moving, but also how fast players are. And I think you look at two of the three right now injuries he suffered concussion. Now the shoulder injury to your point, maybe he didn't, maybe he knew how close Harold Landry was, but he thought, Oh, I can outrun him. And now he's starting to realize how much faster even defensive linemen are. Like you said, we're in college. Oh yeah. I cannot run that guy. Even if he's, even if he's from LSU or Alabama, I could still get around the, the corner, make the turn where I can just use my speed and uh, evade him. We saw it in Tennessee, right? He did not realize how fast that uh, defensive back was getting on him. In part, because I think he underestimated just the overall speed of now players in the NFL. And again, we don't know this. We haven't heard him say it, but you could maybe put two and two together of he maybe misjudged Harold Landry's speed, which again, now you're going to learn that by playing more. And that's why I think these last seven games after the bye are so important for the Colts to make sure that Richardson's on the field. I mean, hopefully for as many of those games as possible, but as close to 100% healthy as you possibly can get him because Again, it helps with the development, and part of that development is understanding the speed of the game, and especially in Richardson's perspective, the speed of the players around him to where he gets down earlier, maybe makes a different read. Like you said, there's all different options now. Once you kind of get used to how fast everyone is, it almost feels like the game mentally slows down for you. It also can help make adjustments and help make decisions easier for Richardson, and those decisions, in part, help keep him upright and safer because he's getting the ball out quicker or handed it off or getting down faster because he now knows and understands the speed of the players that are going to try to take his head off. Yeah. And on top of that, he's still going to grow and he's, his body's going to change. You know, he's still just 21. He's what? Most college juniors are 21. I think yep. that's generally, you know, um, you don't think there's a difference between, you know, a college junior and a fifth year NFL pro in terms of, just their mass, their body mass, their, you know, their ability to take hits. I mean, it, it, that's all part of this. And so, no, it doesn't mean it's going to change, but we have some examples. I mean, Matthew Stafford came in this league very young, very young, uh, and was injured a ton. I mean, I had forgotten all about this. I got to give credit to Zach Hicks. Uh, does a great job breaking down film, basically being a scout on Twix. Uh, also does a lot of work with Sports Illustrated. Uh, and he, he's the one who brought it up first. Matthew Stafford only played 13 of his first 32 games in the NFL. He was injured for more than half of the first two years. And after he mentioned it, I remembered, oh, yeah, there was a lot of concern. The Lions, you know, are they the most unlucky franchise in the league because you draft this kid and he's number one overall pick and he just can't stay on the field and it's never going to change. And he's been hurt since then. But you've also seen a couple things with Matthew Stafford. One, he's become one of the toughest guys in the league. I got to do is look at their win over the Colts to understand that when he's out there with an injured hip and leading the game winning drive in overtime. And two, I think he's, you know, experience and nutrition and weight training and coaching and everything else have led to the point where he's played. He's had, I think no one's going to be upset with this career. Anybody comes in the league and you tell them you're going to have Matthew Stafford's career, you sign up for that immediately. So it's the, the future's not shot necessarily we don't know where all this is leading uh is it an ideal rookie season absolutely not no one's making that argument but even the rookie year is not yet shot and we'll see what happens if Gardner Minshew can keep keep this team afloat and Richardson can come back for the last seven games and stay healthy you might still have a really different feeling even as early as January than you do right now and like you said, too, rookie years do not define careers. I mean, look at Trevor Lawrence. It was not injury-related. It was player-related. He looked like one of the biggest busts in the NFL under Urban Meyer. One head coach changed, and all of a sudden now we think totally differently in less than two years about Trevor Lawrence than we did his rookie year. 
again, it's different with Richardson, and obviously health is a concern that you hope he gets a healthy going forward. But you're right. Even just an injury-riddled rookie year does not all of a sudden mean going forward that he's now going to be injury-plagued the rest of his career. And, you know, there's absolutely a chance, and hopefully this is the case, where, again, we're now we're not talking about it maybe in 2024 and beyond. We're not talking about Richardson if he can stay healthy. We're talking about if he can put it all together or if he can do this and do that. Like, that's, I mean, um, hopefully more what we're talking about. But, again, like I said, it's your rookie year, still changing his body, still learning the league, hopefully too. All the combinations we talked about lead to Richardson being smarter and a healthier player now when he returns from this injury and then also going forward as well for the rest of his career. Let me ask you this, George, because again, it's we've barely like it feels like we've barely seen Richardson, but also we've seen a lot of him as well. And that makes sense because he's gotten hurt, but also like two times at least he got hurt. Uh, well, I should say at least one time um, in that opening game, he basically played the entire game outside you know, the last few plays. That was more because time and score than anything else. Do you feel like right now, again, through five games, the Colts and I have an idea, an idea of what Richardson is, or is the question still, and the jury's still out, just because, again, we're talking about a guy who has one right now complete start under his belt. I think they definitely have an idea. And I think that's what makes it, you kind of touched on this earlier. I think that's what makes this even more frustrating. Because they see all the flashes. I mean, he was 9 of 12 for 98 yards when he left that game. And we had seen a deep shot to Josh Downs. You know, you don't know what, what the rest of that game held for him. Uh, and I think that's that's what makes it even more frustrating. What we have seen is really encouraging. Uh, he's not turned the ball over very much. He's been responsible for seven touchdowns, four rushing and three passing. Um, he's been in absolute terror in the red zone, which was an area that was a major concern in, in the spring. And we talk about things changing, just go back a few months ago. And we're like, well, he's going to have to figure out that red zone. The windows get tighter. It's going to be tougher. And once the game started, he's been highly dangerous in the red zone with his feet and with his arm. Um, I, I think that's, I think they feel really good about the player. And I think that, like you went back to it. all the people that are angry. It's because you want to see more of them because you like what you've seen so far and you want to see more of them. And the Colts are no different in, in that regard. And I do think it, it, it adds to the stress of this situation it adds to the urgency of this situation because outside of the health, which is, you know, how was the play Mrs. Lincoln other than the ending outside of the health, everything else has been highly encouraging about this rookie quarterback. He's literally ahead of, of where everybody thought he would be, except for maybe him, in every other area right now. And that's, again, like, that's why it's like, you look at what we've seen so far and the little we've seen, if you're the Colts, like, I think every box is checked in the sense that, like, you see the explosive plays. You see him comfortable in the pocket. You see him extending plays. You see he can make any throw in the field. You see he can make plays with his legs. Like, the biggest, the two biggest things, right, one is health, as we've been hammering this entire podcast, the other is consistency, right? Now, can you try to eliminate some of the bad plays? And can we now, especially, you know, start to compile and stack a lot of these explosive plays on top of each other and, you know, replicate this success going forward? Other than that, there's not a, right, there's not a question. We, I don't think we could sit here going into week six, George, and I actually said there's a question about if he's going to be good enough, like if he's going to be explosive enough, if his ceiling is going to be high enough to get this team to the playoffs and hopefully eventually the Super Bowl. Like, I think he's answered and or checked a lot of just general rookie year quarterback boxes that you want to see things from. You've seen the flashes. You've seen the explosiveness. You've seen the playmaking. You've seen the the comfortability as well. Like, nothing, the moment doesn't really um, overtake him. He's, again, small sample size, but clutch so far as well. I mean, not finishing the job completely at least, but – Again, in that Rams game to get it to from 23 nothing to a tie game, including scoring a touchdown under two minutes to go to tie it up and then convert the two-point conversion. Like he's made every single area he's been in, he has succeeded in one way. Again, now it's about doing it consistently and obviously being healthy. But I'm with you. Like through five games, even though we're talking about how little he's played and the little time he's been on the field, like he's, I think, like I said, give, given everything the Colts already, I think, want to see – from him in his rookie year. Absolutely. If he wasn't injured, you'd be talking about him and, and CJ Stroud right now. And it would be a really great argument about which of them is having the better rookie year. The injuries are making that a really easy choice. 
And CJ Stroud's playing right. unbelievable football. Uh, and, you know, hats off to him because he went through a lot in the pre-draft process and, and got dragged through the mud and, and has come out and proven people wrong. Uh, and I think that's Anthony Richardson's job now because he's going through it right now uh, with, with people saying, well, he'll just never be able to, to stay healthy and he'll never be that guy. The question now is, is he going to be Matthew Stafford? And it's going to be something that you put behind him and, and he goes on and has a great career. It's going to be RG3 and you worry all along about, you know, what might have been. That's those. That's sort of the fork in the road, and we'll see where that where that leads. Uh, but I do know he's got the complete support of, it, of the franchise from everybody from Jim Irsay all the way down, you know, to to the bottom guy on the roster. Uh, he's got the complete support of everybody in that locker room. That matters right now. He's not sitting there wondering, do I have a job to come back to? That there's no fear of any of that. So just get healthy. And do, you know, I'm sure it sounds dumb to even say do everything you can to stay healthy because I'm sure he already is doing that. I mean, I go back to before week one when we were talking to him about the, the goals. You know, you're leading up that week, the practice week leading into the opener, the goals for the season. And, and he said probably four times staying healthy, being healthy. That that was his key. Uh, so I guarantee you he's as frustrated as, as anybody else. He knows that he needs to be available. He knows that the, that the quarterback position uh, is so important in that regard. Uh, but unfortunately, much like Paris Campbell, things outside of his control really have conspired and, and he's not gotten off to the start that he wanted to. Uh, so now it's a Colts job to make sure the next time he goes out there, he's in the best possible position he can be to stay healthy and to finish out this year on a positive note. And a large part of that, right from the Colts perspective is again, not allowing him to touch the field again until he's back 100%. And especially that right throwing shoulder, there is as minimal risk to re-injury as possible. Um, and that brings us, George, now as we kind of start to wrap up the pot, at least for this Tuesday, you mentioned there's no there's no fear of losing a job, which is absolutely correct. In the meantime, though, there is a lot of belief in Gardner Minshew. We've seen right now Gardner Minshew be 3-0 and in games that he's played a large, if not all, you know, a large chunk of, if not all the game with. Um, so he has shown he can win again with this team this year. We're going to go into the premise, right? That he's going to, that Richardson won't play again until after the bye. So if we just live in that assumption and if Richardson, Richardson's back before, great. But if we assume and we're right that he is not back before week 12 against the Buccaneers, you have five games left, George, uh, between then and now. At the Jaguars this upcoming Sunday, Browns come to town the week after that. Saints come to town at the Panthers and then in Germany against the Patriots. Five games right now, Gardner Minshew, George. If I put right now the number at two and a half win total of those five games with Gardner a quarterback for all five, you taking the over or the under? I might take the the uh, push there. They look like huh. two and one. get the tie in there too. Uh, two and I was and just going to ask, like, how do you get two and a half wins? I guess right, the tie would be a, a half a win. To, you know, go go right in there to two, two, and one. But I uh, I think that's exactly where they need to be. It, it's got to be at least two. You got to be at least two and three in this stretch. And I think that's a conservative number. I don't think it's crazy for Gardner to go three and two or even four and one if they get a lot of breaks. Uh, but you know, this game in Jacksonville is is a really tough assignment right out of the gate. Much like it was in the season opener, Jaguars seem to be getting things together. They've gotten healthy. Uh, you know, it's going to be tough for for those rookie corners. Uh, just like it was tough for the corners in week one. Uh, so, you know, and we know the history in Jacksonville. We'll get into that later in the week. But everybody understands that the free space on the schedule you know, when you're making your picks, um, it's just known what's going to happen down there. So I do think two and three is the bare minimum record that, that Gardner needs to have uh, to feel good about when Anthony gets back. Because at that point, they would be, what, five and five? Uh, and you'd still be alive and in the wild card oh, yeah. race. You'd have plenty of things you could do uh, in the second half of the season. That's not really on paper. Incredibly difficult. You know, the schedule we've been talking about that all year is not overbearing. Uh, Tampa Bay is probably playing a little bit better than expected. That'll be a good game right out of the gate. I'm sure. The Bengals in December are going to look very much like they did on Sunday and, and be a, a powerhouse team. Cause that's what they've done the last few years outside of that. I don't know. There's another opponent that you're really going that's really even a playoff team right now in, in terms of, you know, how the way they're playing. So um, we'll see how it plays out. But I think if, if Richardson get back and finish those seven games, 
the, the best thing for him is if Gardner goes at least two and three. And anything above that is, you know, obviously just icing on the cake. I look at that. I think three and two, George. And again, I, I feel like I'm being fair here. Like, I'll, Jaguars, I don't think they're going to win the game. I don't think they're going to beat the Browns. The Browns defense is legit. That Miles Garrett's is going to be a problem when he comes to town next week. But the Saints are not, like, their offense is not very good. Like, that could be a low-scoring game. And I trust the Colts to make more plays right now. I know they just blew the Patriots out 34-0. Right now, the Patriots stink. But, I, like, that game is not who the Saints are. They are they keep it low. They muddy up the the game. It's gross, honestly, to kind of watch. But I don't think the Saints are very good. And you're at home if you're the Colts. Advantage for you. Panthers right now stink. I mean, Panthers are awful. And the Patriots are awful. I and mean, who even knows if Mac Jones is going to be playing? Like, who, who knows? What the German fans are going to be getting that week. Let me tell you, they are at least promised Anthony Richardson and I guess Mac Jones when there was thoughts that maybe Mac Jones would bounce back with Matt Patricia now, not his offense coordinator anymore. But boy, oh boy, we could look at what Bailey Zappi, Gardner Minshew for uh, for the Germans. Boy, that, the, that's going to get some butts in the seats. What the German fans are getting is Bernard Ryman. That's what True. they're getting. And, and, that, and Marcel Dabo, who's on the practice squad, who's German cornerback. So. You know, they're, they're getting an Austrian who's going to come in there and, and have, I think, pretty sure his whole village is going the way he was talking in the preseason. Um, and then you're going to have Davo, who's a hometown kid, and Colts have got to call him up for that game just have because, to. right? Like, you've got to just be the, the practice squad freebie that day. So uh, that means that the home crowd will be in favor of Indianapolis, right? I mean, clear, clearly. Clearly. Gives them the, the advantage there in Frankfurt. Um, but – yeah, I, the, the other one for me is the Saints, just because Gardner had to play against that defense last year in Philadelphia. It didn't go well. You know, a lot of things you said about the Browns true. are true of the Saints. Uh, the, the, there's a really good defensive team. Uh, but if you can win one of those two between Cleveland and New Orleans, and then you can take care of business against the Panthers and the Patriots, you'd be in pretty good shape coming into uh, what, when you think Richardson's going to come back. And who knows? I mean, that's just us. Maybe he's back for Carolina. Maybe he's back for New Orleans. You know, I, I don't know. Um, we'll see how that goes. But I, I do think it's in the Colts' best interest to make sure that whenever he's back, it's because he's 100% healthy. Right, and that's two weeks from now. Like, we're not going to say boo. Like I said, it, it, it's his body. Again, everyone also, like we talked and talked about before, recovers differently. If he's feeling good and mobile and the, the arm strength is back and the accuracy is there and he's not gun-shy about going out, right, if that means two weeks, three weeks, he's back, ready to go, and you mentioned Jalen Hurts, similar injury. He missed two games. Like it's even though right now the initial diagnosis does not look great. Yeah, and hopefully if Richardson's able to beat it and again is back safely. Could be sooner than later. We could talk, could be talking about a five and five, maybe six and four team at the bye with a hell, hell of a final six weeks of the season to go. That'd be an interesting down the stretch. One last thing here, George, to mention before we do get out of here. And maybe this highlights and pour some cold water on. Richardson returning sooner rather than later. That's from Mike Garofalo of NFL Network that the Colts are working out some quarterbacks, George. You ready for these names? Kellen Mond, Ian Book. Now, I'll be honest. I like to think, oh, I think actually I do know who this is. So maybe I'll just uh, say myself. Holton Allers, A-H-L-E-R-S. Is he, is he the guy from East Carolina? That's a good question. A little bit of a heftier lefty, not to, you know, judge anyone. Um, but I think if I am correct here, that is who I am thinking of. Um, because I was just gonna say otherwise, I love Jared Lorenzen here. I mean, that kind of 2.0, basically. He is indeed. He is indeed. Let's go! From... Yep. Did not look very good against the one game I watched of them against NC State last year. But anyway, nonetheless, he is in the tryout. And of course, George would save the best for last. Penn State legend, but also, also, this is relevant for, uh, for Colts fans, Lucas Oil Stadium legend. Trace McSorley. George, if anyone of these quarterbacks signed is not named Trace McSorley, fire Chris Ballard. Fire him right now. <laughs> Give me his address. I will email him right now. The only thing he needs to see from Trace McSorley. He doesn't need to see a workout. He doesn't need to see how you know much in shape he is right now. I will all I'll do is send him 2016 Penn State, Wisconsin, Big Ten highlights from Lucas Oil Stadium. That is all you need to see, Coach. Or Chris, oh, I want to say coach. That's all you need to see, Chris, to make your decision. Do the right uh, thing. I'm, I'm going to look at his history and say Kellen Mond's the favorite here, right? Because he's a senior bowl MVP from back in the day. Tore it up down there in Mobile. That's We know that that's Chris Ballard's game. 
senior bowl and Chris Ballard are, are in hands. There was one correction that the Garofalo came back and made. Ian Book was not there. They oh. talked to him. He did not go. Uh, Anthony Brown, former oh. quarterback, former Boston yeah. College quarterback, uh, former Ravens quarterback, actually was there in, in Ian Book's place. So I mean, I'm intrigued by him a little bit just because of the skill set. Uh, I, I, I do think eventually, I mean, look, Gardner can stay as long as Gardner wants to stay. He's obviously been a, a very good backup for this team, and, and no one's going to argue with, with the job that he's done. Uh, I do fear that someone's going to try to poach him and make him their starter uh, at some point here if he keeps playing like this. But, you know, cross that bridge when you come to it. But I do think eventually down the road at some point in Anthony Richardson's career, you want to get in a situation where the Ravens are. Tyler Huntley comes in. He's not Lamar Jackson, but he plays a lot similar way as Lamar Jackson. You don't have right. to make tweaks to that offense. You still get the running ability. You still got a lot of the same. So I look at a guy like Anthony Brown, and I think, hey, you know, maybe. But, hey, Trace McSorley ran all over the place at, at Penn State, too. So, you know, you could, and I think a lot of those guys, honestly, I don't know so much about Allers, but I think a lot of those guys on that list were, were mobile quarterbacks. Uh, I don't think that's a – coincidence i was just gonna say they feel cut from the same cloth and it feels like chris ballard kind of has a, a prototype in his mind of what he was looking for there to kind of keep the offense the same obviously you have sam ellinger as well right now as the practice squad slash emergency quarterback who is a very mobile guy as well so like you said with with potentially four quarterbacks you know if you i guess if they put richardson on ir i know he's technically not on the roster but if they sign one of these guys along with Minshew, along with ellinger and just in general with richardson Three to four guys, similar skill sets, dual threat abilities, running and passing. So like you said, you want to try to keep the offense together as much uh, in terms of, you know, play calling and, and scheming together as much as you can instead of changing up like they kind of have to do right now for Gardner Minshew, who's not exactly George. Uh, let's going to say blaze it uh, on an RPO or, or have defenses fear. He'll kind of keep it off the edge and run 150 yards. He did have that spin move though. I mean that that was pretty impressive. Yeah, that spin move. Going. And he had a great quote about it afterwards too. He said he knew he couldn't beat him with the speed, so he did the opposite. He slowed down. <laughs> he just tried to change direction and make that play. So uh, elusive. That's what he may not be fast, but Gardner Minshew is elusive. I do have a feeling, especially if he plays these next five games, we will see one Peyton Manning fake naked boot out of the back and like Ooh. because no one expected this to happen he runs free for a touchdown like he did against the Raiders years ago or I know it's the Broncos but like he did in Dallas and he kind of scored that short touchdown like once in a while right maybe once a year Peyton would get him because no one ever thought well Peyton's gonna keep you know fake the hand off and boot to himself Gardner makes you be obviously more of an RPO I have a feeling one of these five games George he's gonna pull it and he's gonna be running a long time because there's no way any defenses will or should Game plan for Gardner Minshew right now, pulling the ball off the edge. Replicate that 30 plus run from Matt Ryan last year. Just down, you know, in the open field, blazing speed. Uh, you know, we'll get into this more on Thursday uh, or Wednesday this week uh, for the preview pod. But uh, I, I expect to see an offense that, that's at least somewhat similar, kind of a blend of what they ran with. Philip Rivers in 2020 and relying on the quarterback's ability to to read the defense, get rid of the ball quickly. Uh, and what they ran with Carson Wentz in 2021, where the run game was really setting everything up. That's what I expect to see. Uh while while Gardner's out there, we'll see, you know, what what turns out. But if if Gardner's legs become part of that, then hey, all the better. All the better as well. You mentioned a slight scheduling change this week in the sense that we are recording our preview pod on Wednesday. Um, so if you are eager and you listen to this and watch this as fast as you can, you're ready for the next Blue Horseshoe Pod episode to drop. Great news for you. It is coming sooner, uh, sooner rather than later. If you are someone who, again, take your time. Hey, no problem. We hear you. Um, it'll be dropped and you'll see it in your feed, whether it's on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Normal time, late Wednesday. So it'll be there if you want to consume it on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, before the game Sunday. Whenever you want to listen to it and or watch, it will be there for you. Big. Jaguars, Colts preview uh, pod coming out very soon here. George, will the streak end? Well, I guess you'll find it our picks when the Blue Horseshoe pod has returned. Oh, I'll tell you this. We are trying to change our, do our part here. We're, we're changing up the, the schedule. We're shaking things up. You know, we're, it's not going to be insanity. We're not doing the same thing over and over again. Maybe, you know, they do like at least 
we did used to do this in elementary school. Like you do a rain dance or a snow dance for it to snow and have school canceled. I think it was you have to like put a robot inside out, throw ice up in the air, and like scream something. Maybe we'll do that on the podcast. I'll figure out some we can figure out some sort of streak breaking dance or chant we can do here to kind of get the momentum uh flipped for the first time in a very long time. Um, but I think like I said, I think right now nothing's off limits. So if you see a little dancing on the pod. Don't be concerned. We're here doing it for the benefit of you and a benefit, hopefully, of the Colts when they do go down to what has been their personal hell in Jacksonville for a long time now. So that's the reason right there to stay tuned for the next Blue Horseshoe Pod. Have a great rest of your week. We'll talk to you very shortly on the Blue Horseshoe Pod.